Um, I want to talk about how connections between technology and human interaction can make more meaningful relationships and connections between all of you. So who of you are going to an office every day? Yes, a lot of you go to the office every day, um, so that's what I thought. So as we have heard a little bit from Andrew already, and I think he pulled up the American data, it's really shocking that all HR people talk about engagement, how important it is to actually make a company perform well. Um, but in a reality, we only have a bit more than 10% of the total workforce going to offices every day who are really engaged in what they are doing. So this is something what Gallup is in fact observing since several years, that there is a disillusion about the engagement level in our workplaces every day. So we talked to Gallup and we wanted to go a little bit deeper and wanted to see if there's a correlation between the quality of a workspace or a workplace um, and engagement. And um, what we saw or what we see is that there is actually a very strong correlation. So if you look at this data, you see that in fact those people who are happy with their physical workplace, so they are highly engaged, whereas those who are actually not happy with their workplace are pretty dissatisfied. Um, and so now you can go a little bit deeper and say, okay, for sure, if you create a great workspace, that does not automatically give you engagement for your employee. There are other factors which are really important. But if you drill a little bit into the data of the people who are dissatisfied with their workplace, they tell you a couple of really profane things. It's too hot, too cold, it's too noisy, it's too quiet. I guess you know all that, right? We are all not really happy in our offices once in a while. Some people sit there in t-shirts and in specifically in Hong Kong, a lot of personal assistants are sitting there with scarves and thick jackets because the air conditioning is turned down so much. Um, so, but if you go a little bit deeper, you also find that what really people are lacking today is a sense of belonging, uh, places where they can have meaningful conversations. We heard so much about connecting through technology today um, so that people are actually getting this overkill, cognitive overkill with connections, with email. Andrew talked about it. Um, it makes you actually, um, uh, it, it has the same effect um, to smoke marijuana um, as uh, reading too many emails. I really will take that with you, Andrew. Thank you. Um, <laughs> But a um, lot of smart companies actually think what can we do with our workplaces that we can get the engagement level up and that we can attract talent better. Um, so they ask questions like, couldn't we all work from home or at least part of our workforce? They ask themselves, do we still really need office buildings? Or can we work from cafes? Can we work from Marriott hotels? Can we work from co-working spaces? Um, and in the end, a couple of companies tried that all out with sometimes kind of delusioning effects. So 2013, when uh, Marissa Mayer took the job of, um, at the helm of um, Yahoo, she actually found out that somehow this working at home program didn't work so well. So she called her people back to the offices. So for sure there can be a lot of reasons for that, but it seems that companies have problems to do really the right things um, in this arena. Um, and um, the quantity of connections exploded, but the quality suffered. So I think you all feel these frustrations as companies are getting more and more global and um, our people are collaborating across different time zones and across different continents. And you have to be in conference calls overnight or in Skype calls. And I think we all had these frustrations that these um, connections are really not good. But what is even more frustrating that if you are part of a video conference, you are finally not part of the real meeting because you are missing the informal part of the meeting. And this is where the real meeting normally is taking place, right? We all sit together around a conference table and we go through the agenda and we talk all big words and then people are going out for the coffee break and this is where the real alignment or the real decision making in the end is happening. Or um, at the after work beer or like probably today at the um, after conference party at um, five o'clock in the afternoon, right? This is where really decision making and um, personal interaction is happening. 
So that's why overall, if we just rely on technology, um, you will find out that we lose the connection to each other. We are losing the connection to our companies and we are losing the, also the connection a little bit to the purpose. Um, I guess who of you is working in truly global organizations? Hands up, please. Wow, it's interesting. So this is not a corporate community here. That's very interesting. But as you, some of you might um, make their professional choices um, or as your startups are growing, um, like companies like Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, right? Just in a decade, they raised, in fact, from very tiny startups at the Silicon, in the Silicon Valley to huge multinational organizations. Um, and you have this challenge then as a leader or as an employee of this company that you have to work in virtual teams so you do not always see yourself physically. You go to the office and you don't see your colleagues and very often this is very difficult then to create these meaningful um, connections. So it's not always just the finance department which is really kind of disconnecting you from creativity. It also can be that the landlines between India and Hong Kong are not working properly. So that's why we are really glad we have fire chat soon. Maybe we can have meaningful collaborations between India and Hong Kong soon. So as a result of that, um, people become disengaged. I give you a little example. So I was sitting last week in a hotel in Sydney so I always try to choose a hotel in Manly because then I can go surfing or swimming in the morning, part of my work-life balance. Um, but the problem is I had to be in a conference call with North America. Um, and so my North American colleagues, they are really great. They normally do these conference calls. For me, it's 7 in the evening, um, my time. So they have to get up at 7 in the morning, which is really early, right? Um, so now I was in Sydney's two hours time difference to Hong Kong, so I had to do this conference at 9 o'clock, and I really didn't have um, the, the courage to say, hey, guys, please, can you move this conference call or this video conference um, a little bit earlier because it was already 7 o'clock for them in the morning. So it was a real torture for me. So in the hotel, the Internet, in fact, was disconnected every 30 minutes. So I had to dial in again. Um, number two, I always had to move from room to room with my little iPad um, because the, 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 the network was so bad. So in the end, it was a really important meeting, right? And I should have stayed on at least till midnight, but after one and a half hours, I pretended that the connection is down. So I just checked <laughs> out. So sorry for my honesty, but you will be in exactly the same position one day. Um, if you have to really sustain real relationships across time zones and across um, continents, this is what you are facing. In addition, we have all a day job, so if you work across other time zones, this is really a challenge. So this is um, why we believe that the office of today has to completely change. I mean, we all know Dilbert Will, right? This, so this was the time of the, of the panels um, of these cubicles, um, which was, in fact, the 90s. So now in 2000, the new trend was, in fact, to replace all these um, panels, um, panel systems or these cubicles by desking. Uh, and um, so you see huge landscapes of desking now, specifically in metropolitan cities where office space is very expensive. But in the end, people are not really happy with that because they cannot retreat anymore. They cannot focus on their work. So that's why we believe the office has to be transformed in destinations which augment human interaction. So these spaces have to be so attractive and nice that people really want to go there and not just have to come there that their bosses are executing control over them. Unfortunately, we see that still a lot in China that um, work is measured by presence. I guess this will go away in the next decade um, as a more educated generation um, is coming into um, Chinese um, companies, but um, it's really critical that we see these places as destinations. I give you a couple of examples here. Look at this video. 
So it shows, in fact, that we want to bring a digital layer into the space where the technology is really connecting with the architecture um, so that, in fact, the environment is responding to your personal needs. Um, for sure, we have all the kind of computing power in our pockets now, um, but what we have not done yet is connected this computing power to the, to the architecture. Um, so our cars are on the best way to become really smart, but in our offices, we still have a long way to go. I share a couple of examples with you here. Um, of um, space applications which are available now and which are developed further into the future, um, which make, in fact, um, your life much easier. So look at this setting here, this application. You see, in fact, this is a conference room where you can combine analog technology and digital technology. So that means you can bring people in with um, video conferencing with really large screens, but people can still draw on them um, analog boards. So um, in our nature, I think we have a strong um, need to also express ourselves through pens and whiteboards. Um, what we also want to do in a meeting is, in fact, move physically around. So you see all these tables in there are in standing height, and the tables are divided. If you kind of group people just around a large table and everybody is sitting, so there is kind of no physical interaction happening. And it's proven that we can think much better while we are moving. So that's why the next speaker, I feel already sorry, after lunch, early afternoon, you all sitting around. It's in fact a nightmare for in fact um, you listening in such a position, right? It would be much better if we would be standing up or walking around. So then our oxygen would flow, we would get more oxygen in our brain and um, not everything would be sucked into our stomachs to digest the lunch. Another example is what we call the Mediascape lounge setting. Um, what you see here is, in fact, um, this is a device um, and a furniture combination where you have, in fact, um, a seamless um, sharing of digital content. So everybody can just plug in without any software download, absolutely zero ramp up time, and people can constantly, in fact, share digital content. Um, you also can bring other people um, in through video conferencing and eliminate a little bit this, what we call the, the disparity of presence, that the people who are at the other end of the video conference are clearly, in fact, in a disadvantageous um, situation. Also, what you see here with these little stools around it, if people just want to swing by and listen to the group conversation, they just can, in fact, drop by, lean on the ledge, listen a bit, little bit, and then leave later on. Um, another example is for one-on-one -on -one interaction, a, a thing we call the Mediascape kiosk. Um, so if you want to do, let's say, your performance review over video, video conference, you don't have the chance to see your boss in person. So then you need to kind of retreat somewhere in public space, in open space. You don't want to do that in an open plan office. Um, so these are settings which are, in fact, ergonomically um, and from a, pers from a cognitive standpoint um, in a way that you can um, have good interactions. And last but not least, our so-called work cafe. Um, so this is a place which we actually also where we worked a lot with Marriott on. Um, what we can do to kind of create this interaction better in cafes. Working at Starbucks is maybe fun for 30 minutes, uh, but not for half a day. So in our work cafe, you can use technology, you can book rooms, um, you can retreat also in enclosed conference spaces, you can get catering, and what we said, you have to have the best food there. Don't make the coffee cheap and bad. We want people to be there. And last but not least, also once in a while you need to rest. Um, so we worked with Susan Kane on quiet spaces. Many of us are introverts and want to retreat. So um, also these are spaces a modern office as a destination needs. So in the end, place alone is not the answer, but it's a critical step. Place shapes behavior, and behavior over time is culture. And in the end, the culture is the brand of your company. Thank you. Thank you.